So let's have a this conversation about arrhythmias, about irregular beats, palpitations. Uh, we have a microphone off here to the side. Um, anyone that has a question, raise your hand. We'll get the microphone to you. Maybe I'll start. Um, you mentioned one out of four of us in this room are going to develop atrial fibrillation. I know there's at least three people that can be relaxed right now because I'm the guy. I got, <laughs> I got atrial fibrillation. My, my atrial fibrillation is exercise-induced. Yes. Um, other than not exercising, <laughs> what can I do to prevent atrial fibrillation? What can I do besides going to see you? Now, you're, you're a great electrophysiologist, <laughs> but, but you I don't, don't want, want you to put a catheter into my heart yet. You don't want me around. Yeah, I mean, I had a similar situation. A friend of mine, you know, co-fellow during training, he said, geez, I develop a fib, and I said, stay away from your EP colleague. <laughs> oh, I, so exercise induced, does it happen? Let me guess. It happens most commonly after exercising when you rest or during exercise? I actually, the, it's during. During. During, uh, during, a, or during extreme yeah. exertion. Like when I'm playing basketball with a bunch of 20 year olds. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Don't tell me I can't Dude, do that. Don't anymore. do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you see, men can do stupid things knowing it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's true. That's true. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I hope it's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, listen, it's, it's known um, during, during sympathetic stimulation. So in exercise, we have release of adrenaline, the so-called flight or fight response, and that can trigger some of those cells in the pulmonary veins to fire, mm -hmm. to fire out of sync, and all you need to do is one or two extra beats coming from the wrong place at the wrong time to initiate a fib. And if it's, if it's a functionally driven phenomenon, if it's depending on adrenaline, by the time you rest, it should go away. Uh, but the problem with AFib is that its initiation and its termination is a stochastic phenomenon, a random phenomenon. So it's a matter of probability. I'm sure it doesn't happen every time you exercise. Or I'm sure when it happens, it's just not always a predictable event. Um, but when it happens, it's a matter of chance for it to stop, and if, it's, if the sympathetic drive is, is a powerful reason for it, it should, it should go away. But exercise, especially intensive exercise, has been associated with atrial fibrillation. Marathon running, for example. You know, there's crazy people that think the more exercise, the better. The marathoners, the triathletes, that's actually bad, particularly for AFib. It's bad. There's nothing, as far as exercise, more than you know, running two, three miles three times a week, more than that, there's, I don't think there's any benefit. As far as for you. Thank you. Uh, we have another question out here. I just do want to say one thing. One thing that's helped me is to reduce caffeine intake yeah. and uh, uh, to reduce alcohol intake, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, alcohol is a big. I a find big that, that that does help. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Canonis uh, yeah. added a beta blocker. So I do take a beta blocker now when I play basketball with the 20 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. Yes. That helps. We have a question back here. Hi. My question is uh, Is a heart murmur an electrical issue? No. Or so a heart, heart murmur is a sound. So this, this is a common misconception. So a heart murmur means that when someone puts a stethoscope in your heart, it sounds, it blows. It's like vroom, vroom, vroom. It could be during systole, it could be during diastole. They're different murmurs. Many of them don't mean anything. They mean that your heart is close enough to the chest wall that, that even the normal flow sounds. But a murmur is not a diagnosis. A murmur is not a disease. A murmur is just that your, your heart makes a sound. So it could be from a valve problem, it could be normal. You know, you're absolutely right. But I would add one thing. If she has, um, uh, if people have murmurs, some people with murmurs can have atrial fibrillation yeah. as a result of the, if there's of a the, severe of the, valve of problem. Of the valve disease, yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, like I said, by itself it doesn't mean anything, but you want, to, you want to stop thinking in terms of having a heart murmur. You want to get an echocardiogram and, and show that your valves are normal, that, that your murmur was benign or your murmur was a functional murmur, which means normal, uh, not due to a valvular problem.
heart failure and uh, they had to crack open my chest and repair the mitral valve because the, yes. the wall, you know, it was too thick. It wasn't closing properly. The blood was flowing back into my lungs and I wasn't able to breathe very well. So I had to like sit up instead of uh, lay down when I go to bed at night to sleep. <laughs> uh, and uh, when they went in, they also saw that the tricuspid valve was not working properly either and so they repaired it at that time. You know, and, and since then, you know, every now and then I, I do feel like a, a little flutter. And I, I, I was just curious if... Uh, so, you know, what you're, what you're describing is, is actually quite... It's more common in men to have leaky valves because they, there's a condition called mitral valve prolapse that the, the, the mitral valve may be, may be redundant. So if there's too much tissue and it kind of bounces into the left atrium and it leaks. And sometimes, as it progresses, it may just leak more, leak to the point that it exposes the left upper chamber to high pressures, and that may trigger atrial fibrillation. I mean, you had the full-blown disease with leaky mitral, leaky tricuspid, and you had a surgical repair. Sometimes, a couple of things. When you have a surgical repair, the heart has to be stopped. So the surgeon has to stop your heart and fix your valve, and then get your heart back uh, running again. To stop the heart, they need to suck all the blood, all your blood gets sucked from the right upper chamber, gets put, uh, put through a heart lung machine and then pumped back into your body. So you stay alive and the surgeon can work in your valves. The surgeon leaves a scar. When they, when they put this hose to suck all your blood from the right upper chamber, they leave a scar. That can actually lead to electricity spinning around the scar. It's called incisional flutter. So there's a few things that could be going on. Uh, plus, you may have atrial fibrillation from, from however many years you had a leaky valve that led to enlargement of the left upper chamber. So there's, there's a few things that add to the substrate that leads to atrial fibrillation in, in cases like yours. But again, when you just have a uh, fluttering every now and then, you need to be monitored. But it could, because it could be extra bits from the lower chambers, it could be flutter, which is a technical term of electricity spinning, it could be atrial fibrillation. Only the monitor would help us figure out what, what your rhythm is when this is happening. Well, you know, it was a, uh, thank you for sharing that story with us because I think it was a great illustration of uh, how sometimes um, women are, women's issues, women's problems with their heart are not taken seriously by the healthcare provider. We have to do a better job uh, as uh, healthcare providers to uh, listen. Um, but uh, I'm glad that you're here and you're feeling better. Yay! <laughs> Um, there's some more questions coming up on the screen, and uh, maybe uh, start with the top one. Is there any correlation of heart palpitations with hormone shifts? Well, there is. Um, there is increased heart rate, normal heart rate. So, the, like I said, the natural pacemaker of the heart usually fires at the rate that, you're, that you need. So if you're resting, it fires at 50 beats per minute. If you start talking, it fires at 61. If you take a deep breath, it accelerates, and when you exhale, it, it decelerates. So the actual rate, your pulse rate, is very finely tuned to your needs. During the menstrual cycle, there are accelerations of the, of the normal mechanism. It doesn't mean you have an arrhythmia, it doesn't mean anything is abnormal, but just because of bleeding or even without bleeding, just the hormonal changes uh, can lead to altering of the baseline heart rate. So instead of being addressed at 60, you may be addressed at 85, and that can be sometimes unpleasant. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, there shouldn't be much, much alteration other than that. It looks like someone took exception to calling women's valves friable. Maybe, maybe a shoe, he meant, I think, delicate. The, the, why, <coughs> why, why do you think women have more delicate valves? I, I mean, it, it was not a judgment. It, it was just, <laughs> this is a fact that uh, women have more pericardial effusions, more tearings of, of the heart tissue during ablations. Maybe we should use different catheters. We have only have one catheter, one, one size fits all, and maybe we should just use smaller catheters, more tuned for women. Maybe that's, that's just the problem. The equipment only comes in one kind, and maybe we should have a female. Uh, right. yeah. Yeah. I would like the smaller catheter myself. <laughs> <laughs> We have another question, yes. 
Um, can you briefly address um, traumatic events in someone's life and the mental connection with irregular heartbeat and how long that can go on before someone So that's, seek help? that's extremely common. Um, uh, any stress. So the, like I said, atrial fibrillation depends on having one extra beat that comes from the wrong place at the wrong time and initiates this crazy disorganized electricity. Extra beats, we all have them. If you look at anybody, even healthy medical students, you monitor them for 24 hours, there's all kinds of scary stuff that happens and people don't even feel it. So rapid beats, runs of five, six seconds of rapid firing, upper chambers, lower chambers, you name it. So the heart is not a machine. You know, we tend to think of it as just, you know, we fire, we get electricity firing from the normal uh, pacemaker and then it spreads, it's a nice sequence, but that doesn't happen in every single beat. So a small percentage of beats could be abnormal. With caffeine, you increase the chances of having more extra beats. Caffeine messes up with the way, the way uh, cells handle the calcium in the, in the uh, heart and makes them more prone to having extra beats with exercise and stress. Stress is a huge, is a huge uh, uh, producer of extra beats uh, in the upper chambers and in the lower chambers. Um, and in as much as it, it increases the chances of having extra beats, you know, say one of every hundred extra beats puts you in atrial fibrillation. If you have only 10, chances are you will not be in atrial fibrillation. But if you have a million extra beats, you're gonna have, you know, at least a thousand or, or 10,000 incidents of atrial fibrillation. So it's a matter of having more triggers with more stress. Also, um, the nerve, the way the heart is connected to the brain is fascinating. And uh, some of the nerves that control the heart rate. So obviously I mentioned the heart rate speeds up with exercise, but the heart rate also speeds up with, with stress. I, I remember, you know, you, you may be sitting there and you decide to ask a question, like right before ask, grabbing the microphone, your heart is a little bit faster, right? You're not moving, you're still, you're still sitting there. So just like it speeds up, uh, there are nerve mechanisms that actually can put you in atrial fibrillation. There's some form of atrial fibrillation called vagal atrial fibrillation that happens in situations of stress. When people faint, sometimes there's, there's atrial fibrillation. So that kind of um, neuromodulation of the heart rhythm is fascinating. We're, we're, we have a project on that and it's, it's something that we are actively pursuing um, to see if we can find a treatment targeting the nerves of the heart, not necessarily the heart itself, but modulating the nerves to protect against AFib. But all that, all, all, other than yes, there's a connection, we don't know much more. Well, thank you for no, telling pleasure. us about why the heart flutters. Thank you.